welcome back to this course on C programming and assembly language. Uh, we are in module 3. Uh, in the last couple of lectures, we have discussed how to translate a given C program into its assembly output. Right? In that regard, we looked at a typical C function and we said that uh, apart from the body of the instruction which is shown in the middle here, you needed to add a couple of instructions in order to set up the context called the prologue and uh, which basically was you know, pushing EBP, moving EBP to the correct context of the called function, subtracting ESP, N which is basically allocating local variable space. Uh, then before you exit the function, you need to undo the exact same operations that we did in the prologue which is adding ESP, N and bringing ESP back to its original value. Then popping EBP back to its uh, and moving EBP back to its original context that it had before it entered this function, right. And RETN is, was needed so that apart from returning and going back to the called, calling function, we have to, we had to clean the stack and undo the effect of pushing the parameters. In this regard, we had discussed uh, two different calling conventions. The underscore underscore std call is the standard call which is a faster uh, call than the other calling convention and this is uh, where the RETN instruction is executed. Uh, the necessary condition is the function knows exactly how many parameters and what the parameter sizes are. Uh, for functions like printf where the uh, function parameters could be variable and is determined only at runtime, then it is the calling function that knows how many parameters are being passed onto stack or being pushed onto stack and therefore you can undo this effect only in the calling function and not within the function itself and that undoing is uh, uh, implemented using the add esp comma n instruction so in this lecture what i want to look at is i want to look at the c++ functions So C++ is a very powerful programming language and uh, really it is quite similar to C in syntax and other things, but it offers a very powerful programming concept called object oriented programming, right. So that is a programming paradigm by itself and uh, we are not going into any of those details, right. What I want to discuss in this lecture is at an assembly level assembly implementation level, if I compile a C++ program, do I need to add any extra instruction to my prologue or epilogue? That is the only thing that I want to focus on in this lecture, right. So let us take a typical example uh, which is basically class, you know, CLS test, some test, okay. I am going to say it has two member variables int a comma b okay and then I am going to say public um, let me do int add of int add and I am going to do return a plus b. Okay, this is my class definition. So clearly there is one member function here. Right, and these are member variables. So if I look at uh, you know a typical C function right, how different is it from this okay. So the primary difference is that I am not passing any function parameters to this function add right, but I am still able to access the member variables a and b in this function. So remember that this public, private and protected and you know this inheritance and all these concepts are 
verified and checked by the compiler or the pre-compiler, right? None of this actually has an effect at an assembly language level. So, does not mean that because this is a public function, you know, suppose instead of a public, suppose this was private, right, does not mean that this function cannot be accessed at assembly level, right. All these checks are done at compile time, but at an assembly level, there is no check that is enforced to make sure that you do not access this function there, okay. So, let us now look at the main implementation where I use an object of this class. I am going to say main, right, and I will say CLS test x, okay, and I am going to do x dot add, okay, and maybe I can do int z equal 0 and I will do z equal to x dot add. Okay, let us assume that the constructor of this function uh, class has initialized a and b to some reasonable values, okay, so that we do not get uh, some junk when we do this addition operation, right. So, now the key point is that when I do x dot add, right, x is an object that is sitting in the stack of main, okay. So, if you look at the picture of the stack here. I would have my stack sitting like this and I have the object x which basically has two variables a and b. This together is my object x, right. Now I am trying to call the function a d d. Okay. So, if I look at the assembly translation of this particular function, then it will happen exactly like how a normal C program would have been translated. For example, this does not take any, it does not take any parameter, therefore it will get translated simply to call A D D. Okay. And of course, this function right out here would get translated exactly in the same way that we had discussed earlier right where we do a push ebp and uh, we we do a move ebp comma esp and we do subtract esp comma 0x 4 0 some some random number that will ensure that we have enough local variable space right and then we go ahead and implement the body of this function right which is basically uh, you know whatever the instructions that are needed to do add a plus b right so this is instruction for a plus b okay and then i do my epilog The question is because this is a C++ program and there is an object x, what I need to do now is to access the local variable x which is sitting in main when I am actually executing the function add, okay. So if you look at this when you, when you do the call of this function add, right, then obviously the uh, return address gets, let me put that in blue, gets pushed onto stack, right. This is return address, okay. And after that, uh, you know, I will go ahead push my EBP on stack of main, right. Then I am going to uh, move my EBP to this point, right. And my ESP then will get moved somewhere up here. This is how my stack will look when I call the function add, okay. Now, 
all I have to do is to ensure that when I am accessing the variables A and B, I do not access them locally in my local variable space out here, right? This is my local variable space of Fn of ADD. I need to access the original object which is sitting in main. So, somehow I have to get access to this particular address and that is available through something known as the this pointer, right. So, the C++ you have something called the this What is the this pointer? So, in the function add, right, actually these variables here will get translated to this arrow A plus this arrow B, right, which is nothing but the pointer to the object X of itself and that is why it is called the this pointer and then you refer to the variables A and B. So, therefore, when I am dealing with a C++ program, I need to additionally pass the this pointer whenever a function fn is called, right. A member function fn or a member function add is called, I need to pass the this pointer somehow. So, now the question is how do I pass the this pointer? Well, one way is you could maybe push it onto stack or you could pass it through a register, right? Because unlike function parameters, the this pointer is just one in number. There is only one this pointer that I need to pass to every function. So, therefore, I can actually pass this through a register and ECX is the register that is assigned for this job. So, this pointer is Past ECX. So, what happens is before I actually call this function with call ADD, right? What you would do is you would get the address of X, okay, and load it into ECX. So, uh, let me move that here. So, this would now you would uh, move ECX comma address of X okay which by the way is just uh, you know some EBP minus 4 or EBP minus 8 where EBP is the value in main and not the value after going into the function ADD okay. So, you are going to just pass this address of x into ECX and call the function ADD, okay. Now, when I enter the function ADD, I might, you know, want to use the register ECX for some operations like for example, the uh, string related operations or the CMPSB or something, I might want to use ECX to do these special operations and therefore, I have to free that register ECX and therefore, an extra operation that needs to be added to the prolog is to push ECX onto stack before you start anything in this function, okay. So, ECX comes in with the this pointer that is pushed onto stack then you do the remaining prologue that has to be done for any C function and then proceed. So, what happens is now apart from EBP, I am also pushing my this pointer onto stack before I start my program and therefore, function parameters will now get addressed not as EBP plus 8 and EBP plus 12, it will start directly with EBP plus 12, right. So, what is happening here is in between I am pushing my ECX 
which is this pointer and therefore, my E B P which is pointing here can now refer to function parameters only 3 4 bytes away 3 into 4 bytes away and therefore, the function parameters will now start as E B P plus 12 and E B P plus 16 and so on right. So, that is the only change at an assembly level when we deal with a C++ function as opposed to a C function and in fact, that is known as a this call. So, if you deal with G++ instead of GCC, then every function will get translated to a this call and it behaves exactly like the C decal call right. What does behaving like a C decal call mean? It means that the stack cleanup happens outside right using, using the add ESP comma n instruction right. The this pointer is passed in the ECX register and it stores the this pointer in contents of EBP minus 4 which means the first local variable in the function is actually the this pointer which is on stack. So, let us now go back to our original question right that we started off with in module 2 right we had a function void swap of uh, int star x comma int star y ok. And the question we asked was cannot we do the following right we want to swap. So, can we do this push contents of x push contents of y pop contents of x and pop contents of y. The question was could we have done this and we said it was not possible. So, now we will explain why that was not possible right. So, this clearly was not possible. Right. So, instead what we said was we had to add to other instructions we will come to it right. So, now let us now that we know how the function parameters and local variables are translated to assembly language let us look at what this actually means at an assembly language level. X and Y are function parameters to this function swap and therefore, this actually is push contents of remember x itself is contents of e b p plus you know maybe if it is a this call it will be e b p plus 12 right. This will be push contents of e b p plus 16 this will be pop e b p plus 12 and pop e b p plus 16. So, why is this not possible? The answer is very evident from the assembly instructions that we have here. We do not have an ability to do a double indirection of address. What we are saying is get the contents pointed to by E B P plus 12 and then use that as an address and push that onto stack. So, this is a double indirection which is not possible and therefore, we had to correct this by adding two instructions which was move x uh, move into E A x you know the value of x move E B x the value of y and then we said we will do push contents of E A x right push contents of E B x pop contents of E A x and pop contents of E P x and this was indeed possible 
or is indeed possible because we have moved x and y into registers right and of course i can in fact write this as e p p plus 12 and this as e b p plus 16 right so we have translated this particular swapping operation using just a single indirect addressing mode right as opposed to the double indirect addressing mode that would have been translated to if we had done push contents of x on contents of y as shown in the on the left hand side here so with that we conclude module 3 uh, and in the next module we will look at some optimized implementations of c programs we will also look at why recursion is not a great idea from a assembly point of view and from a performance point of view and we will also look at uh, a few other special functions to wind up this course